I have to admit that this bonding property that is so characteristic of nanotechnology reminded me a lot of what we read in uh, the book of Daniel about the Antichrist being like a man. Uh, it just made me recall even verse uh, 43, Daniel chapter 2, verse 43. And whereas thou sawest iron mixed with miry clay, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men, but they shall not cleave one to another, even as iron is not mixed with clay. Now, I just bring that up because that's what it made me think of. I'm not necessarily saying that they're connected directly, but isn't that something, though? Another thing that I noticed is related to the nanometer, the unit of measurement that I shared with you earlier. The, the unit of length in the metric system that's equal to one billionth of a meter. Aside from the field of nanotechnology, guess what? It is also closely connected to the wavelength of light. In fact, it is the most common unit to describe the wavelength of light. So ladies and gentlemen, I mean, is it just me or does that seem even a little more too coincidental? You mean to tell me that the one technology that exists on the planet today that has the ability to alter God's creation, alter life, create life in a sense, a perverted, dark, sinister sense, <laughs> changing it from God's original and perfect state is closely connected with, with light? Or the very first words, the, the first thing that God himself created? Genesis 1, verse 3. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. Again, knowing what we know about Satan's pride and his, I think it was described earlier, his insatiable lust and desire to mimic and mock God in every single way that he can, isn't it telling that the one science and technology on the scene today that we're pointing to as being a likely tool for deception, death, and destruction in the hands of the future Antichrist is the one that is also tied to the very first words spoken by God. I just think that that should be food for thought. Now at that point, we kind of come to the end of the part of, of my presentation that seeks to consider the potential connection between nanotechnology and the Mark of the Beast prophecy. The last few minutes here is a lot of things that came to the surface and, and came to my attention this past week. And it's a lot, of the, uh, a lot of what caused me to add this to the presentation and, and change things around a little bit. So I want to sh slightly shift gears for a moment and, and consider a, a couple of other angles involving nanotechnology. Whenever we bring up the subject of aliens or UFOs, our minds, despite our spiritual underpinnings and despite what we know it uh, to be a, a spiritual phenomena, a demonic type of thing, we instantly picture one of two things. Either we envision the, what, the traditional gray alien, let's call it, or the classic silver disc-shaped flying saucer, right? I mean, I, I'm just assuming, but I'd venture to guess that that's what most of us would probably think of. Of course, we can thank mass conditioning and Hollywood for that. But in any event, in putting, to, putting to, together this presentation on nanotechnology, I began to suspect that, again, maybe there's a link between this cosmic conspiracy and this cutting-edge sci-tech. And I only thought of it because of what we saw in the mainstream press so much at the beginning of this past week. I mean, it goes back maybe two or three weeks, uh, but you know, you turn on Fox News, you turn on CNN, you turn on any major cable news network, you were seeing the host sitting down and talking to uh, physicists or people, whether it was about um, you know, the Vatican uh, astronomer saying he would baptize aliens if they came here and they asked for it, or uh, the UN appointing an alien ambassador, or uh, you know, those, those 100 plus ex-Air Force personnel who uh, gave a, a speech at the uh, press club in DC to say that, hey, uh, you know, we have proof, personal testimony to suggest that UFOs are real 
and that they, they threaten our nuclear facilities. They pose a threat to this country, national security. All of that happening in such a short window, and at the same time that I was preparing this, and, and at the same time that God was working on me in, in preparing this, uh, you know, the, the thought popped up that maybe there's a connection here too, given what we've always been told about this phenomenon. So I began to examine the clues that might be out there. First, if we look at what scientists call the, the nanobot swarm, I think I, I might have alluded to it earlier, uh, we find some compelling evidence to suggest that nanotechnology is somehow involved in what are normally classified as UFO sightings. We'll define the nanobot as having the following characteristics. By definition, nanoscopic and therefore invisible. The ability to either link together or to exert force. The ability to self-replicate in order to create larger structures. The ability to generate light of any color in any direction. The ability to fly. And the ability to network, transmit data, and receive instructions. Now. Inter interestingly enough, connected to the nanobot swarm is what scientists call a utility fog. Conceptualized by nanotech pioneer J. Storrs Hall in the 1990s, imagine billions of nanobots, each with the capabilities of flying, linking together, generating electromagnetic radiation of any wavelength, any color, and networking to a central host for instructions. Under programmatic control, this nanobot swarm could be instructed to be invisible and then, based upon some logic executed on the controlling machine somewhere, suddenly turn into a wall, a sofa, or an entire room. Now this is coming from those on the cutting edge of nanotechnology who could care less about the whole alien UFO satanic agenda. They're not including that in their description here or, or you know, uh, what they perceive to be plausible, possible. But my question is, why stop at a room? Could we assume that if this is possible, then perhaps it's the very same technology being employed whenever we see traditional UFO and flying saucers, which most uh, reports say it just seemed like it appeared out of thin air. Well, that's odd. That's a characteristic of nanobots. And, and what else? UFOs are often described as structures with no bolts, no rivets, very light, and very strong materials, etc., etc. In other words, structures not built, but maybe grown. A carbon material like carbon-60, uh, the, the buckyball, as it's called, or the fundamental unit in nanotechnology, could we say that maybe that's what's used in those cases? Then there's the greys. Greys are commonly included in, in all of the alien abduction claims with many unique characteristics. Some testimony suggests that they are artificially constructed robots or cyborgs of some sort due to their movements. Isn't that fascinating in light of this discussion? Some alien abduction reports have depicted variant skin colors such as blue-gray, green-gray, or purple-gray, and sometimes not gray at all. Other characteristic of nanobots like we just shared, the ability to present themselves as any color. The skin is typically described as being extremely smooth, almost as if it is made of an artificial material like rubber or plastic. They communicate little with the abductee and proceed methodically about the physical work of examinations, probes, and scrapings of the human body almost like they're programmed to do so. The greys are even said to appear to glide about or float from one point to another as opposed to walking. And sometimes there's even mention uh, being made of a waddling motion. Of course, we're all familiar with the oversized head, the thin neck, and the small body uh, by most accounts, which is no more than 50 pounds. I have to tell you that I began to wonder if... Grey goo 
the gray goose scenario is responsible for their physical appearance. Again, I, I know how it sounds. I'm just putting it out there. You know, I mean, just last week, though, in case you're inclined to think that such a notion is too far off, you know, for, to, to even give it any time or serious thought, just last week, this was the headline in the mainstream news. Robotics breakthrough. Scientists make artificial skin. And in the article, we read that the e-skin, as it's called, comprises a matrix of nanowires made of germanium and silicon rolled onto a sticky polyamide film. So when I saw that, in relation to what I was already thinking about, Again, just, just more food for, for thought. Definitely something for uh, prayerful consideration. It, it, but lastly here, it, as far as this whole alien UFO potential connection is concerned, it started to really come together for me when I, I thought about the fact that all of the predictive programming that we've seen since the 1950s uh, about aliens, UFOs, it, it seems to fall into one of two categories. Either they're here to kill us and hurt us, whatever the case may be, or they're here to help us. It's the latter possibility that caught my attention, especially in light of 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 14, and no wonder for Satan himself masquerades as an angel of light. Sure, I, I think that, I personally think that we will be presented with an us versus them paradigm. But they're both, both will be two sides to the same sinister, sinister coin. There's no doubt about that in my mind. But it's these so-called good aliens that are here to help us. You know, if, if that, that whole process plays itself out, that's where I think there might be a nanotech connection here. I mean, think about the popular ABC TV show V, because it's a good example of why I feel this way and where I'm going with all this. Uh, the visitors come to Earth offering all sorts of advanced technology uh, to what? Make life easier. 